Welcome back. This is another tutorial about another great set of tools in PRISM. Imagine that you have a folder with a bunch of images and this can be uh, say uh, a knight's imaging. You image a bunch of targets and you want to see what they look like. Well, one of the ways is to open each image and look at them. But that could get tedious and that could get to be a quite a long process Right now I'm imaging with an ASI 094 and it's 7000 by 5000 pixels and the images are almost 70 megs each. Imagine that I have 24. Let me show you. I imaged the Veil cluster and these are all the images I took. Uh, let's uh, choose CPA. So we have 24 images. We can choose to open all of them which again will be a tedious process and quite long. These are 66 megabytes each. So, as anything else, in PRISM we have a tool for that, which is this button right here. Image Browser. This allows you to preview in, in small scale all the images from that folder. As I said earlier, this is the Vail cluster right here. So Prism will build previews of all the images inside. Now that the images are loaded, you could see a small preview of them. Uh, we have a few tools available to you here as well, uh, between deleting and removing from the cache and so on. Or you can just display them as um, a list, if you would, so that you could get more information about them. Um, the CCD temp, the focus position, and so on and so forth. But to really dig in and see more analytical information about said file, you need another tool. So we go to analysis, all the way down, quality check, stellar images. So what we do here is we offer you a tool that analyzes all the images and gives you a really um, detailed data about these images so you can make really educated decisions about what you want to do with the data. So let's go fr from the top to bottom. Uh, this button up here selects the images. So let's get some images here. I'm going to go select my CPA files. Shift click all the way at the bottom that chooses all the files image zone so this is where the calculation is going to happen you can choose the entire image which in this case is not advisable half the image which is the central half of the image quarter or the eighth or you can go for a customized area if you wish um, these are x and y coordinates of pixels i'm okay with half the central area you can check these boxes to give us detailed graphs Exposure time as X scale, so you see what how the uh, things evolved over time, and this is seen computation as defined per the area above, which is it only calculates seen from the areas you choose here. The Bayer matrix of this camera is option number four. We select that, and we press OK. Prism is going to load the images and it's going to analyze them. I will pause this session for now and come back when all the calculations are done. All right, here we are. Um, we have a bunch of information here. So let's, let's start. So the results window here tells you what has been done. Uh, it loaded all the images and then analyzed all of them. So let's close this, let's lower this. So these are the graphs we wanted. This is star elongation in percentage over time. So the x-axis is in days, by the way, for the record, and this is the elongation of the stars. So as you can see, we, we start with <clears throat> quite severe elongation, and it gets better worse better worse but this is this gives you a graphical representation of the quality of the data 
some of it is close to 50%, and it seems the bigger distribution is between 20 and 30. Ideally, you want less than 20% elongation. Maybe you should take a look at guiding or your, your pointing model. Let's close this. The next one in scene in arc seconds. This is also calculated as the time progresses. So here we start from about a little bit over four arc seconds and it gets worse as we progress through the night and then it gets better again. My suspicion this is um, after a meridian flip. But we'll, we'll check the data to see. But as you can see it's it's just linear. It just gets worse over time. This is the uh, median sky background measurement and again it progressed over over time. This is the exposure integration time in seconds which is 300 and this is the measurement of the median sky background. The next one is the mean sky background as well. Uh, x-axis is integration time and y-axis is the sky background in uh, the mean value in ADUs. So now let's open the table that was produced. So basically it gives us the sum fundamental information, uh, the targets in sequence, uh, the times in sequence as well, and uh, bear in mind you can select some of these um, headers and click on them to sort, just like a spreadsheet. Um, for width half maximum, arc seconds and pixels, detailed over here. Elongation of the stars, which is the quality uh, of the, the images in a, in a nutshell. Um, again, angle, number of stars used for measurement. The mean ADU, the sky background, the background noise, and the meridian angle. And this is the elevation. Temperature of the CCD and focus, and this is the side of, uh, side of pier, which means where, which side of the pier the telescope was on. Since we're imaging an object in the east, this is pointing, the telescope is on the west side of the pier, and these guys here at the end, as you see, it changes the east side of the pier because we did a meridian flip. And we can see this from, I believe it's in the meridian angle as well. So basically we started in the east which is minus 2.1 hours, hour angles, and we evolved all the way until this point where a meridian flip happened, and then we end up on the west side. You could tell by the negative value which is the east side, and the positive value which is the west side. I hope this helps you um, identify um, your good data. Uh, this is especially helpful like I said the next day when you have a bunch of images and you, you really want to know the nitty gritty if you would of, of your images to see which ones are good and which ones you should you should toss. Uh, maybe seeing got really really worse and you end up with about 50% elongation um, and you can just choose to toss all those images so you can stack only the best data. Um, bear in mind that PRISM al already does that in the pre-processing tool where you can actually um, set the parameters of your image sorting automatically right here. So for with half maximum and elongation. However, this still provides great insight into your data. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I, uh, I will see you on, uh, on the next one, uh, whether it be a tutorial or, or something else. Enjoy your evening, and have a good one.